Have you ever wished that you could take the expressive power of your Ableton Live setup and MIDI instruments to control stunning real-time visuals in Unreal Engine? Well, building off of the work as seen on the Sem and Tris AV Club, as well as their own respective YouTube channels, I'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process of building a Max for Live device from scratch that converts your MIDI data into multiple streams of OSC data for you to use so you can control events and effects inside of Unreal Engine. So without wasting any more time, let's begin. To start in Ableton, let's add a Max MIDI channel effects on a fresh MIDI channel and then click on the Open Max Patch button on the top right corner screen of the effect. Now, the idea here is to build a patch that'll take the incoming MIDI data and convert it into OSC data, which then gets sent out via your computer's port and IP address for other software such as Unreal Engine to parse and use. So start by adding a MIDI parse object and put that after the MIDI in object. This particular node separates raw MIDI bytes into standard message types. This works particularly well in formatting the output of the MIDI in and seek objects, which is exactly what we want in this scenario. After that object is set up, the next thing we'll add is the unpack and strip note objects. This will break the previously created list into individual messages, which can be separated out into individual pitch and velocity outputs for further control with the unpack object. From here, we'll add a prepend object, which adds a message in front of the input. Now, this is where the patch diverges and meets in a couple different places. First, add a prepend set node following the first prepend object. The set argument on the second prepend node allows us to replace the stored message which is needed, as once we set up the track address input, this will allow us to choose between one of many separate track addresses. Following the prepend set object, add a text edit node so you can monitor the string of text to help ensure that it's indeed the correct command being sent out. With that output being set up, let's add the second and final output for the prepend object. Add an UDP send object and set the argument to 127.0.0.1 space 1312 to define what your computer's local port and IP address is. This is needed as it's what takes the incoming string of data, converts it to OSC data, and then sends it to the appropriate receiving programs. As the max help file states, max messages are serialized and sent over the network as OSC compatible UDP packets. Now, we must set up a track address function to give even more objects to the string of data. Add a live.thisdevice node and run that into a live.menu object so we can choose a desired track address. A bang message is automatically sent from the left outlet of live.thisdevice when the session is opened and initialized, which then confirms the previously chosen track address in the live.menu object. In the inspector tab, scroll down to the range and enter in all the desired track addresses you wish to have access to. For the sake of maximalism, I'm going to add 64 channels to work with. Once that's all set up, add a plus one object following the live.device node. This adds an offset of one, which is handy in this use case, as the live.device object starts outputting values at zero, which makes things a little funny to work with when dealing with the list of channels. From here, add a sprintf object, and then the argument slash midi slash percentage i slash note. This object allows you to combine symbols organize lists, organize lists of numbers, or format messages and menu items, which brings us to what will be a commonly used argument slash formula in this patch. The MIDI statement is a swappable variable to determine what channel the OSC data is being sent out of. This will be useful as we'll be adding more channels for velocity, duration, etc. The percent one argument is where the track address variable will go depending on what the variable is set to. And finally, we have note, 
This is where the pitch, velocity, duration value, etc. will be stored, depending on the corresponding output. With that explained, add one more prepend set node following the sprintf node. Take the final output of this and plug it into the prepend object. This should complete the basic functionality of our MIDI to OSC device. But why stop there? What about velocity, duration of notes, duration between notes, number of notes being triggered, and other fun number generator functions like a random number generator and a counter, all of which I feel would be worthwhile data to have and extract so you can have even more outputs to modulate your Unreal Engine variables with. In order to achieve such a thing, we'll use the Borax object, which acquires and outputs comprehensive information regarding note-ons and note-offs. In order to save some time setting up, I'll just steal the example from the help files. From here, attach the output of the MIDI parse object into the input of Borax, and we'll then be able to start extracting some variables from our initial MIDI data. Now, since we already did the hard work of setting up the appropriate order of operation for the first channel, all we need to do is horizontally scale that segment of the patch and then rename each of the newly updated variables along with plugging in the correct input depending on the variable at play. So for example, let's copy and paste everything from the sprintf object down to the prepend and prepend set objects. Rename the sprintf argument with velocity instead of MIDI, then everything should be good to go with repurposing that bit of code. Since we're doing the velocity channel, the right output of the strip note object is where we'll start building the next section off of. From here, make a scale node, enter in the incoming minimum and maximum velocity values of 0 to 127, and then enter the conversion scale of 0 point to 1 point. Be sure to add periods to the end of the argument numbers, as this is what will convert our integer data into float data. I like doing this so it's easier to scale accordingly once inside of Unreal Engine. With that set up, take the output of the scale node and plug it into the prepend object. Next, take the output from the track address section we made earlier and plug it into the newly modified sprintf object. From here, there's just one more object I'd like to add, as what if you don't want the data from the velocity channel, etc. Well, making a mute switch is a pretty easy task thanks to the G switch object and a toggle button. So, coming off of the prepend node, add a G switch. Then, add a toggle that plugs into the first input of the G switch. On the toggle box, in the inspector window, click on Initial Enable and set the value to 1. This will ensure that whenever you load the Max for Live device, that it starts the additional channels as muted as not to send over any unnecessary data. Then finally, take the output of the G switch and plug it into our final destination node, UDP Send. This should complete adding the velocity channel to the MIDI to OSC device. Earlier I had mentioned the concept of horizontal scaling, and this is where that idea will continue. Copy and paste everything we just made for the velocity channel, and then repeat the previously explained process for the remaining outputs. Renaming the sprintf object, inserting the correct data stream to the prepend object, then sending the final output to the UDP send node. Thanks to all the outputs from the Borax node, we should be able to get several more channels of data because of this. Now that all those additional streams of data are set up, let's add two more functions for the fun of it to give us as much data as possible to work with once inside of Unreal. A random number upon trigger generator and a counter. For the random number generator, add a random node and set the argument to 100. Next, add a live.num box and plug it into the second input of the random node. In the inspector window, change the unit style to float, turn on initial enable, and then set the initial value to 100. This num box is what allows us to freely scale the random number as desired. From here, repeat the steps as shown in the previous examples, 
and then the random number generator should be good to go. For the last counter data set, add a counter node with an argument of 1, then 16 to start. This argument will start the counting on 1 as opposed to 0. Next, add a bang node for input 4, and another live.numbox for the fifth output. This bang object is what will allow us to reset the counter, and the second numbox, like in the last example, is for scaling the amount you wish the counter to go up to. With that set up, repeat the same process as in the previous example, and then you should be good to go with the counter function. One last little thing to add for an extra bit of flexibility for the main output. After the strip note node, add a plus object and plug in a dial to the second output of the plus node. In the inspector window for the dial, adjust the range to negative 48 to 48. That way, you can have a two octave offset in either direction to the initial value. Now for the final piece when it comes to this MIDI to OSC device, which is being able to define the values for the port and IP address, along with some quick and easy access commonly used addresses. First, add a U menu object, and in the inspector tab, find the menu items option. Type in local, comma, remote, comma, touch OSC, comma, custom. This will give us four labeled preset tabs to assign our values to. Add a plus one node to offset the menu starting on zero, and then add a cell node with an argument of one, two, three, four. This is what will allow us to select between the four preset options we just created. Following that, add a bang output for each of the corresponding outputs. From here, we'll be using set, host, and IP messages to update the settings argument on the UDP send object. So in order to keep things tidy, let's make four send nodes labeled S, preset one, etc., and then plug the output of the cell node into the bang objects, which then goes into the send nodes. We'll then make corresponding R preset one objects that will trigger the preset message boxes. The first preset we'll cover is the local address, which is 127.0.0.1 for the IP and 1312 for the port. Create message boxes and type in host 127.0.0.1 and set 127, set 0, and set 1. This will cover all the messages needed for the IP. Next, create a SIP node and plug that host message into that object. Then, create a RIP object and plug that into the UDP send object that the patch ends at. For the port address, We'll do the same thing as the previous process, but create a new send and return object named S port and R port. Now, this preset system works, but we don't have any visual feedback or means of entering in custom values. So let's add that with some more live.numbox objects. Create four objects for the IP and one object for the port. From here, plug in the set messages into the appropriate objects. With those connection points created, in order to get the UDP send object to understand the live.numboxes, we need to combine the four values. This can be done easily enough with the combine object. Conveniently enough, in the help file, there's actually an example of this for IP addresses. So once the combine node from the help file has been added into the patch, all we need is a prepend host message before sending it off into the previously created SIP object. One last thing. The outputs on the live.numbox should also route over to a bang object, which then is also plugged into the message box. This will ensure that the address gets updated and sent over to the UDP send object every time a value on the live.numbox is changed. Now, for the port, repeat this exact same process with the exception of the combined node, as the port is only one value as opposed to four. With all of that set up, you should now have the first preset tab up and running. For the rest of the presets, let's follow the horizontal scaling method as mentioned before and create three more presets. The remote preset will consist of zero, 
point zero point zero point zero and thirteen twelve. The touch OSC preset will be one ninety two point one sixty eight point twenty point twenty one and seven 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 seven. And the final custom preset can just be set to zero point zero point zero point zero and then finally zero. This should conclude setting up the preset functionality of this MIDI to OSC device. All that's left to do is to arrange everything in presentation mode for the actual Max for Live device. So select all the necessary text display objects, number boxes, and toggle switches, then arrange away. This is what I've come up with thus far after trying to figure out the best way to arrange everything. With that being said, this more or less concludes how I set up my MIDI to OSC Max for Live device. In the next video, I'll talk about how to set up the OSC router in Unreal Engine so you too can begin controlling events and effects with your musical instruments in Ableton sessions. If you have any questions or suggestions on how to improve the device, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all my future content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.